Welcome to the Fit and Free with AIM podcast. I'm your host, Amy Louise. By listening to this podcast, you'll gain clarity and apply now principles in relation to training, nutrition, and mindset, all designed to help you build a strong and lean physique and show up as your best self. If you're a woman who struggles with excessive behaviors when it comes to training and food and think of yourself as a perfectionist, I hear you, I see you, I was you. And I know that you're in exactly the right place to change that narrative and build a body you love inside and out. Let's go. Hello, welcome back to another episode. Today we're gonna be talking about comparison, comparing your physique, comparing your results to that of other women, particularly I think on social media as well, because I definitely feel like that is a place where this can just run rampant and be really, really no good for our overall mental health, but even our own results in general. Before we get into it, of course, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. If there's anything that you resonate with or really love, I would also appreciate if you could definitely give the episode a share on your stories and tag me at the underscore female physique hub. So I have been thinking about comparison quite a bit recently, and I've been talking to so many of my clients who are typically like high achieving women. They put a lot of pressure on themselves to achieve certain goals. And a lot of them are also quite active on social media. And I think when, when we are on social media, we are being, we are privy to so many more people than we would in like, do I say real life? Because I guess, you know, us being on social media is still real because it has an impact, but I guess it's online, isn't it? So if, we step, if we're stepping out of the online space and we might be thinking about our family, our friends, our workplace, we are coming into nowhere near as much contact with that many people but on social media it is it's a never-ending scroll and now if you're on instagram maybe you're also on tiktok maybe you're on youtube facebook there's people that the amount of people that you have access to is just so not what you would usually have access to in in the real world the non-online world and the first, I've got a few dot points to speak to, but the first one is just understanding that comparison is normal. It is something that all of us do. And I think the solution of just don't compare yourself, just don't care what other people think, just don't look to other people, I don't think is in any way, shape or form, realistic. The other thing about it is not only is it really normal, there is also a positive side to comparison where that leads to expansion, where we might actually undertake things maybe that we didn't think that we could do because we can see other people who are just like us doing these amazing things. So... The first thing I wanted to talk about with comparison is that, and you might have heard this saying before, is that as human, of course, pain is inevitable, but suffering is a choice. That might be hard to hear at first, but it's very much putting the power back. I'm going to say the, maybe the ball back in your court is just reclaiming your power and understanding that as part of being human, we're all, all of us, none of us, nothing that you can do, no body that you can have, no results that you can get, none of that can prevent you from the inevitable pains of being human. All of the horrible, horrible things that do happen, not to get too dark on this episode, but we can't escape pain. But the way that we process that, the way that we think about that, Unfortunately, we can exacerbate our own suffering. And I see this happening with comparison. And the first way that this happens with comparison is actually being upset at ourselves or stressed that we're comparing in the first place. So it's like meta, you know, it's not even 
about the comparison, we're compounding the situation because we're upsetting ourselves for comparing and we're trying to resist it so much. And something that has definitely come up for me recently in the last year or so, maybe even two years, is actually thinking about leaning into what is painful, leaning into what is scary, leaning into the really uncomfortable things that I don't like maybe about myself. And it does change a lot when this happens. And I do think that this is the place where we reduce our own suffering. So I'm not sure if you've heard of acceptance and commitment therapy, but it is a kind of therapy that can be used along all sides of different psychological therapies. And in it, there is a concept of basically like thinking that you're playing tug of war with yourself, with your own thoughts. So you're on one end of the rope and your thoughts are on the other. And this, this idea is like you're struggling against, you're resisting, you're fighting your thoughts of comparison, which is this layer of suffering. What would it be like if you just fucking let go of that rope? What if you just drop that rope, put it down for one second? You don't have to put it down forever if you don't want to, if that scares you. But just put that rope down, stop fighting yourself stop resisting so much just for one second you know the other thing that you might have heard this cliche but it, um what resist persists sorry what we resist persists because it's like you end up putting so much time and energy on the thing that you're trying to stop or get away from it ends up being like a huge focus of your life at any given time and I'm laughing because like of course I do all of these things I must admit I don't do this with my fitness I, I really don't I don't do it with my body I don't do it with my progress I used to it used to consume be all consuming before I hit 30 now I don't but I definitely still do this in other areas of life I absolutely still do this in other areas of life so I, I'm I'm here with you so from there, we're like, okay, how about we just drop the rope for a moment, okay? And stop trying to fight ourselves with this comparison. And the next part of that is just quickly going back to, it, there, there is opportunity for comparison to actually be helpful. And I don't know if I still actually have it up on my computer in front of me, I don't. But there are social theories of comparison and one of the reasons why we use this is to basically see how we're doing compared to everyone else. And it can help us, um, what's the word, be, sorry, can inspire us to do this. Comparison can actually be really, really helpful for us. At the same time, as you probably know, it can also be incredibly destructive and lead to, or it, enhance low self-esteem and depression and anxiety, some really unhelpful things. And I guess could even cause like a, you know, fight, flight, freeze response too. But it is, again, it's normal. It's not really something you're going to be able to completely stop, but there are ways of managing it, which is what I'm going to go into next. Okay, so we know we've got this thing. We know that we can reduce our suffering by just dropping the rope and instead of like spending our whole time berating ourselves for comparing, we can just go, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to add that layer of suffering in. And I think the first port of call when we're doing this is to look at our social media for a moment. And maybe some of you aren't on social media at all. Um, but I think a lot of us are, and a lot of the issues are coming from our social media use. So I think one of the very first things is to definitely cultivate or curate your feed. I think this is of critical importance. There is absolutely no benefit to you in continuing to follow people that when you perceive them, you are destroying your own mental health. 
don't do it. So you might have to, depending on where you're at, you might have to make a note to do this and review this monthly or quarterly. Or you can do what I do, which is almost every time I'm on social media, I am telling the algorithm what I do and don't want to see. So the three dots on the post, not interested, irrelevant, don't want to see this, mute. I play the mute button like there is no tomorrow. I mute everywhere but you know what I'm, <laughs> now I'm thinking about it I even mute people because there are some people who I know in I know in real life off the online and I really really like them but their online presence is just it's you know it's a it's a facet of them that they've turned the dial up on fair enough go for your life absolutely um but yeah, I, I will mute if it's just not relevant and not, not, not something that I want to be seeing or, you know, maybe they're continually banging on about a point I disagree with, whether that's right or wrong to mute them. I just do. I think it's just so much better. And I've definitely seen drastic, drastic increases in like mental health for having done this. I did, I went on a spree after some psychologist appointments at the start of last year for something, again, different to this, but um, it was still, it was still like comparison and the world of difference it made not being part of that corner of the internet anymore. I cannot even begin to explain how much of my life I felt like I got back, but it's so interesting because I did that to myself. I chose to follow these people and then they weren't good and it was consuming a lot of my thoughts and yeah, it was just having a conversation with my psychologist um, and yeah, I decided that this was just no good and I was missing out on nothing. Like there, there wasn't, there was just no benefit for me to do this. And the negatives were far outweighing anything that started out to be a benefit. So definitely start off with curating your social media. And now you might say, yeah, but aim, it's not that it's like, I'm actually seeing people in the gym or I'm having a hard time maybe with like my best friend who I absolutely love, but I, she's you know, kicking goals in whatever kind of physique area or performance area or whatever. And it's really hard to kind of feel like I'm not good enough when I'm comparing myself to this person. So that's when I think we can go into like curiosity and compassion. And of course, this can be related to people on social media as well. And I do think that this is worth doing, even if there are people you're like, I don't resonate with these people. And I kind of feel bad when I view their content because the story that I tell myself when I'm viewing their content is that I'm not good enough. Like I'm measuring myself up against them in whatever way and I'm deciding that I'm not enough. So I would say that let's have a look at, let's have a look at that with cur curiosity and compassion. So we've got to come at this from a very compassionate place to ourselves or else I don't think this is useful. You, again, you just want to limit how much you're berating yourself for this shit. It is just not going to serve you in any way to do that. But I think coming at it with like curiosity, like what is it about them? Where do I think I'm falling short? Um, you know, what's going on here? Is there any kind of like a victim mindset at play? Am I bitter? Am I resentful for certain things that have happened in my life? Have I not yet processed some things? Um, for, for me, when I'm looking back at when I was comparing myself in a physical sense, you know, and when I was going through a lot of this, we didn't have Instagram, right? So I wasn't even going through this. I, I just, it's, it's, yeah, it would be so much worse today if this was the case for me, but yeah, this wasn't when Insta, I was actually just talking, I went for a walk with one of my clients on the weekend and we're actually talking about this because she's just turned 40 and we were both saying like quite grateful for the time that we grew up in without without all these pressures of social media but it can be really interesting to ask some questions so for myself back then when i was viewing say someone in high school and um she had come back this actually a particular person had come back sort of my friend like in my friendship group ish we just weren't really close She'd come back from, you know, summer holidays and had lost like 10 kilos, was really small. And this is the Paris Hilton, Nicole Richie era as well. Like the simple life, but when Nicole was getting like real skinny, if you're, if you were also born um, around like the late eighties, um, probably early nineties, you, you might resonate with this as well. It was like that heroin chic era. It was really, really toxic. 
There are absolutely no talk of body positivity or like any of that, man. None of it. None of it did not exist. And so that, you know, I was comparing myself directly to someone in my community that I saw and it was like, she's popular with all the girls. It wasn't even necessarily the boys, but this girl was popular with all the girls. It's kind of like a mean girl situation, kind of like a Katie um, from Mean Girls. <laughs> but she was like the most, well, one of the most popular. And um, yeah, it was kind of like, well, people like her more because she's, lost all this weight so that's what I kind of need to do and then that as as the years or like as high school started to wrap up and finish it then did morph into like well you know these girls are the girls who are getting the boyfriends and some that was something for me that was always so out of reach and now I now I know why it had nothing to do with like my body weight it was definitely just you know some personal conditioning as a result of my household upbringing <laughs> there was lots of problems that you know absolutely nothing to do with how I looked or anything like that it was so so much deeper than that but that's what I thought it was right so it's just getting curious and compassionate I don't think I would have had the cognitive ability to dive like that in high school when this was really affecting me I don't know maybe um, I definitely feel like the access that we have these days to information is like, again, it's a blessing and a curse. But if you are younger, I don't really have anyone too much younger than 25 listening, I don't think. But just say you are, I imagine, you know, today, this era is such an amazing time for, I think, for our awareness to be far more broad than it was, I think. And... Yeah, just coming at this and just saying like, you know, where is this coming from? Where do I feel like I'm falling short? Where do I feel like I'm not good enough? What are the stories that I'm telling myself about this? How can I make this make sense? Like what about my life up in this point actually makes sense? And it's actually logical why I feel this way. And it's actually so logical or reasonable, you know, why I feel like this and why I'm coming up with these comparisons and these stories. Like it makes sense. It, it will make sense for some reason. Your brain wouldn't do this. It's, you know, somehow it's trying to protect you from something. It, it thinks it's doing the right thing. It thinks it's helping you. So there is going to be some kind of story somewhere along the, the line. Um, and then it just manifests in this way that's incredibly unhelpful unhelp for us. But it will just be some kind of, yeah, something in the background that is worth looking at. So from there, it can be really useful as well to just have a think about your, your narrative around agency and like victimhood. So that's like the opposite, I would say, of agency. So are there any stories where you're doing, well, if only I was her, if only I had the opportunity, she did, if only... I had her genetics, if only I had access to the resources she does, if only I. So I get it that life is absolutely not fair. Good people get the shit end of the stick sometimes, they get the good end sometimes, bad people get the shit end of the stick sometimes, and they get the good end sometimes too. There, There is just no... How I do not believe that whether or not you're a good person actually does dictate anything that happens to you um, externally. So if things are out of your control, you just have no control over them. You aren't blessed with anything good for being a good person, except for potentially like, you know, if you water your relationships, it's highly likely you'll have good relationships. And I would imagine that good people tend to water their relationships. Does that make sense? So for the things that you have control over, for those places that you're, you know, putting your time and energy into being a good person, I feel like those things will come back at you like fucking tenfold. But in terms of just like the, the randomness of like your genetics, it has nothing to do with your, whether you're a good person or not. How tall you are, <laughs> whether you typically sit relatively lean or if you sit heavier, it's got nothing to do with whether you're a good or a bad person, right? Your, you know, your um, individual anatomy will dictate how how challenging or easy it is to move through some movement patterns. You know, the taller you are, the um, longer your levers are, the greater range of motion you'll have. You'll you'll be having to take weight through space, right? Like, 
It's got nothing to do. You didn't have any choice in that, right? Um, and even to an extent, it, we can even talk about this in terms of like access to resources and um, who you're surrounding yourself with and even to an extent your environment. So some of these things are definitely out of your control, but there are a whole lot of things that are within your control. You know, one of them is choosing the thoughts you think or the ability to reframe that's within your your choice i don't think our thoughts are necessarily our choice at all because they seem to pop spontaneously pop up into our heads but i do think we have the choice to change them to like to witness them and then re choose to reframe them if we so choose i do think that we have a choice about the content we're consuming online i think if you have the access to being online then you have the choice and the reason why i say that is it could be different with people in your community or people in your workplace you may not have well you you, you wouldn't have a choice if you're i mean you could quit a job but then you know we're looking at the financial ramifications of those sorts of things so you're going to have less of a choice with just say there's someone who is not really good for you in your vicinity, but maybe you don't have that choice, but you do on social media. So really just have a think about where am I victimizing myself? Where am I taking my power away? Because it can be easy in, in the moment of you saying something like, oh, it would be nice if I looked like her or isn't she lucky or it's easy for her to do these things. Uh, I think you're absolutely taking your power away um, and you're, you're comforting yourself in the moment, but I don't think it's actually benefiting you. It's just making you bitter and resentful. So thinking about that for sure. Um, I was going to say one more thing. It has absolutely escaped my head about, um, about agency and victimhood. Oh, yes. It was the whole, like, oh, it would be nice or she's lucky something that i've encountered recently is a whole lot of projection from other people on my own results it's really interesting that these things happen a lot when i feel like they happen when you start tipping the balance so either when things start going poorly for you or start going really well compared to your like homeostasis other people will just I mean, people are actually projecting all of the time, but I think it gets louder when there's a change. When there's a shift in your normal, people notice and will say things. And so, yeah, it's something that I've experienced this year. So I've said this a few times. I hope I don't sound like someone who's incredibly self-indulgent, but I've had just a really great year with my health and fitness goals. Like it's been the best I've ever had. And yeah, I've had uh, uh, a few people seem to be really pissed off that I've had a good year and upset that I've had a good year and upset that I, the way that I communicate and I do this, if you're a client of mine and you've been on the other end of my check-ins, you know, this is exactly how I communicate to you behind closed doors as I do when I'm online is I try to take a really like long-term approach first. So sustainability, being grounded, being realistic. Yes, it's my job to help my clients get the best results they can. They, that's why they're with me. Like they wouldn't be signed up to a coach if they didn't want to get results, right? Um, but in doing that, and especially knowing that I do work with a lot of women who's first reaction is to berate themselves and bring themselves down and be so harsh and not be able to see any of the progress they've made for like the one thing that didn't go right. I'm really often talking about sustainability. I'm talking about taking pr the pressure off yourself. I'm talking about, yes, go for, go for it when you're in a place to do so, like fucking turn that dial up, you know, and I celebrate my clients who are in um, those phases where they can. And also I am very realistic about the fact that we just don't know how long those phases are going to last. They could last for a long time. We don't know how long they're going to last for. 
and that I think that they are actually more fewer and further between, especially with like the absolutely dynamic lives that we're all living. And for whatever reason, because I'm in like, I feel like I'm in my golden era right now, it was really annoying some people because in other years I've been talking about like, you know, I don't really have my mojo right now and I'm finding things challenging and this is how I'm adapting to that. But just understand too that with social media, you are seeing 0.00001 of someone's life. Most people are not that active. They're just going to be posting like the really amazing things. They're not going to be talking. You, you, they're not going to be talking about the challenging stuff. Some people do here and there. But you never, ever, ever, ever know the real story of what's happening in someone's head. You can never know that. And hopefully you have the emotional maturity as well to know that a body, a performance result, a home, a relationship, a job, a holiday is never, ever, ever, ever. None of those external things will ever dictate anyone's internal peace. None of those things are the difference for someone's internal peace. Someone can be going through some, re some really significant challenges and have internal peace. Someone can look like they have it all, quote unquote, on the outside and be incredibly torn up on the inside. Peace is just an inside thing. And it can be absolutely easily faked. So just remember, our brains are, are filling in all of the gaps all of the time. So people are posting on social media and our brains are off in fantasy land, imagining what their life is like, how easy they have it. And we just will never have any way of knowing. And it's highly unlikely your projection of someone you don't know is accurate. That's the other thing. Remember, if we're talking about social media, you don't know them. You do not know them. If you've ever heard about parasocial relationships, it's that sometimes we think we do. The more we see someone on socials, the more we can actually feel like we know them, that we're their friend. And you might forget that potentially, you know, especially with like fitness influencers, they don't know you. Not even like fitness influencers, just anyone online that you haven't met, that you haven't built a relationship with, that like you're not DMing, you don't know. But even when you think about that, I don't know if you've ever had this experience and I don't want to go too deep again, but it's like you can have friends who are really struggling and don't tell you. Even when you ask consistently like, hey, I think something is up, what's up? Hey, I think something's up, what's up? Are you okay? Are you okay? Yes, 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 yes. And then there might come a breaking point where they're really unwell and then you find out, you know? So you, the outside, the superficial tells you absolutely nothing. And especially if your comparison is laying on this fantasy life that you believe someone else has, it's, it's just that, it's just fantasy. So just finishing this episode up with, if you are finding that you're comparing your progression, body results to other women, oh, actually the most important thing I needed to say about this I can't believe I left this to the very end, but I do want to say that we do not, not one of us starts on an even playing field. We're all starting. So just imagine a race. Every single person has started that hundred meter sprint at a different place. Some people are within 10 minutes at 10 meters of the, the finish line. Someone starts on the finish line. Someone starts 200 meters back. Another person is 500 meters back. Okay. When you, I think when you can appreciate that as well, it makes the idea of comparison in terms of using it to like be upset and, and mope around about it, all that more absurd. And I'm talking about things like genetics, whether you're male or female, what was happening when you're a child, whether you had access to resources to engage in like sports or anything like that your nutrition as a child, you had no control over that. You're a child. You have no control over that. You had no control over your access to resources. 
And the reason why I'm saying that is potentially those who were sportier at a younger age may have more developed motor skills as they as they um, get older and start engaging in like weightlifting kind of training. That the age that you were exposed to the gym, how you know, just the way I think things were when I was growing up. I didn't get into a gym until I think like late twenties, which. It's just so like now culturally is it Gen what generation is it Gen Z the Gen Z <laughs> I can't even remember what they are um, but it's it's so common now to be a female and lifting at like fourteen fifteen sixteen no one did like no one no one lifted weights at that age um, you know my whole school <laughs> so just remember. Just if you, if it's helpful as well, just remember, like, think about a 100-meter sprint. Not one of us is starting in the same place. So, of course, your sprints are going to be completely different to the next person. So, two more things that we can do before I wrap this up. Number one is gratitude. And look, again, I feel like this podcast has been a bit morbid, but you just never know when things are going to change. And things can be rug, the rug can be pulled out from underneath your feet in a fucking second. And I've had two beautiful clients. I say beautiful because they're they're friends. I know them <laughs> deeply and love them extremely. And they both within months of each other had the rug pulled out from underneath their feet and it has significantly impacted their ability to do what they love in terms of I'm literally talking training literally talking training one of them is unable to train and it was a huge sense of passion for her she was an athlete she was an amazing athlete and something happened and she's unable to train that happened in the click of her fucking fingers and then about uh, eight months later, um, another client had something that happened with her as well that significantly impacted her ability to train like she was before. And it's been really rough for... Oh, fuck, I feel like a fucking idiot saying it. it's been really rough to witness it because just imagine them... Um, but yeah, I've, I've been witness to this. So I do actually also think that it has had an impact on my own view of my own training this year. It's like, fuck me. I'm so lucky. It's luck. I'm so lucky. You know, I'm grateful, but I'm also lucky. Like I'm so privileged to have a body that moves I'm so privileged to be able to wake up every morning and choose to go to the gym. And I don't mean that like in just some airy fairy sense. I literally witnessed two people that I love have that rug pulled out from underneath them and one of them have to stop altogether in the click of a finger. There's no fucking choice. Both of them, no choice, no warning. Their life changed overnight, like in an instant. And I think, yeah, when you go through those moments in time, it does really help put everything into perspective. And yeah, man, it's like, why the fuck would I not use every moment that I have to do the things that I love, which one of them being being in the gym? And why wouldn't I try my best? Why wouldn't I? Because you just never know what's going to happen. And yeah, like when you think about it like that, when you really put it into perspective, it just it doesn't make any sense like not only will I never look like anyone else like I can't I will never look like anyone else I can look like different versions of me and I've been extremely pleased with like the changes I've been able to make and these changes as well these changes of as well um I can't believe how great they've been but it really does put it into perspective. So with that being said, I feel like this was a really, really, de really deep podcast. And I did not mean for it to be like this at all. I just, it just happened. 
So if you resonate, I would love for you to shoot me through a DM and let me know. Um, otherwise, I'll be back with something a lot more light next week.